Hey guys, Mark Robertson from Dural Irrigation. Today we're going to have a look at how the Hunter Mini Click wires up to a Hunter X2 or X4 controller and a few of the benefits about a rain sensor in general. So, rain sensors need to be mounted in an unobstructable um, position to rainfall. So, basically, on a fence uh, or on a gutter, which you can get an extra gutter mount uh, for, for this uh, particular rain sensor, um, or on a separate post. Uh, and basically, They've got leather discs inside them. When these leather discs get wet, they expand and they push down on this little circuit and cut the circuit and turn your system off. The leather discs will take a few days to dry out, similar to your dirt. When they do dry out, opens the circuit again and we're up and running. Okay, so really, really simple, super easy to wire in. Uh, it could save you a hell of a lot of water uh, and money, basically. Uh, if your system's still running uh, when it doesn't need to after it's been been raining. So without further ado, let's have a look at how, how to wire it in. Let's go. Okay, once you've mounted your rain sensor in an appropriate position where it's completely exposed to the elements, you need to run your rain sensor wire back to the controller, ideally through conduit, so it will be protected. Uh, if there's excess wire, you can chop it off and then strip back the two cables of the rain sensor. So you've got two, two cables here, red and a black. Now it doesn't matter about positive, negative, there's no difference, it's just a circuit. So we need to wire these two wires into the sensor terminal on the controller. Now most controllers will have a sensor terminal, some don't, and I will tell you how to wire it into those uh, just afterwards. Now with the Hunter ones, they've got this little metal bridge that comes in the sensor terminal. You need to take that metal bridge out, otherwise when it rains and your, your rain sensor tries to activate, it can't cut the circuit because the circuit is still complete. So we need to undo the sensor ports. Okay, and remove that little metal bridge. Okay, see that? So that is basically completing the circuit. With that metal bridge out, you'll feed your wire in through here, through the bottom, through the conduit, and wire in one wire into each side of the sensor port. Okay. Probably want to take a little bit more time to get a nice good connection but yeah the two wires into the two terminals on the sensor port once you've done the wiring you make sure that your controller with the x2 or the x core your sensor is on on not bypass if you do want to bypass your rain sensor for any reason if you think that the ground's dried out and that you want your system to be turned on you can bypass it there Okay. And that's the advantage of wiring in the sensor into the sensor ports because controls with, with a bypass, uh, you have that feature of bypassing it. Okay, if you are wiring your Hunter Mini Click into a control that is not an X2 or X core um, and it doesn't have any sensor ports, so it might be a really old one, you can always wire the, the Mini Click into the common wire. Now if you're doing that at the controller end, you can just put one wire of the mini click into the common. Okay. And then when, when you wire up your, your solenoids, you attach your common wire onto the other wire of the rain sensor. So essentially the, the mini click has interrupted that common. When it gets wet, it will cut the common wire and none of your solenoid valves will operate. Okay, disadvantage of this method is that you cannot bypass it, you have to wait until the uh, sensor has dried out completely uh, and then the system will come on. Uh, one good thing about it though is if you don't have a, an appropriate spot to mount the sensor near the controller um, and your, your valves are out in the field and they're a little bit further away, you can uh, mount your rain sensor near your solenoid valves just by basically interrupting that common wire anywhere along that cable. Okay, so that's that can be quite good. 
And now we've gone over the benefits uh, and installation of our Hunter Mini Click. Just want to touch on some of the new Wi Fi hyperwise controllers. Now they use a different method than a, a, a rain sensor to turn your system off in the event of rainfall. They use a virtual weather station which basically takes weather data from several different sources uh, as they're connected to the internet. Um, it can use forecast data as well as historic data uh, over the last few days to turn your system off in the event of rainfall in your area. Now, this is 90%, maybe 95% um, accurate. Um, if you're in a particular area where the rainfall isn't that accurate close to your particular house in relation to the weather data source area, um, the best thing and the best way to be sure is to add a hunter mini click, so a proper rain sensor on your property, that gives you the best of both worlds. And that's my Flow Pro tip of the day. Thanks for watching.